Here we are at the Lynx DCIC data submission tool login page. You can see the address is a secure address and includes, amongst several other things, a single sign-on with Cedar through Keycloak. At the top, you can see we're on the data submission tool and get some basic info about your account. In addition, you can see how many of the data sets that have been submitted are missing certain aspects. You can highlight the individual data sets and on the right side, you can click buttons to submit anything that's missing. Let's go ahead and start a new data set though. In this data set, we'll be taken to Cedar through the single sign-on, and you can see the red asterisked individual fields are the ones that are required by the Cedar template itself. We'll go ahead and fill out most of them, but not all of them, because we have a validation service through the Lynx DCIC API and a validation server on our side. Here we will be selecting RNA-seq through a checkbox, which will indicate which of the templates we need the DST to pull in order for us to complete this particular data set. Same thing here for the associated metadata reagents. Once we select those, the DST is going to know which templates we will need. So we go in, we click on validate, and we notice that we are missing several fields. So we're gonna go back and fill those in. Now again, this is not solely based off of the CEDAR requirements, but the requirements that our validation server has. So you'll notice data set title and data set release date are not required by the CEDAR template itself. So we go in and we'll select the date that we are submitting this. And now we'll go back and we will try to validate again and we get no errors. So we'll go ahead and save this. And then when we go back to the data submission tool and refresh the page, now we have our new RNA-Seq Demo 3 data set with the individual buttons based off of those checkboxes we selected. One thing we can do, we can go back and update the data set metadata in case we get new information or need to update the information at a later time. It's always saved. Same for all the other ones. Now, if we open up the RNA-seq metadata, this is one that is obviously specific for the RNA-seq assay. Just like all of the other calendar-based ones, we can select the date, the instrument, that's just a free text field. Interestingly, anything that is numerically required, we have to have in an integer. And if we don't, the little thing that has the sort of caution symbol will show up until we type in a number instead of several letters. You can also see we've got radio buttons to ensure that the user has a much more clear idea of the controlled vocabulary that is required which is one of the best parts about Cedar is the ability to maintain these controlled vocabularies. Going to the cell line metadata, you'll see several key features here. Under the cell line metadata category, you will see we have the links common fields and the cell line custom fields. The links common fields are so called because they are in every single type of reagent metadata that we have whether it's a cell line, a small molecule, a protein, antibody, or anything else that's used. They will always be the same, and these are primarily identifiers and canonical names that are utilized for these particular reagents. We can also change this to a spreadsheet view so that we're able to copy and paste directly from something like an Excel spreadsheet so you can have multiple entries simultaneously. Again, looking at ease of use for the user. Going to the organism, we do have this connected to BioPortal, and we can select from a drop-down list which one we want. Same thing for the organ that the cell line came from, and in this case, we'll be selecting pancreatic duct, even though mycobacterium do not have pancreae. We'll still do it just for the sake of this little demonstration. Same thing for the cell type. These are all connected to specific ontologies within BioPortal that are set up during the generation of these templates and the individual elements that make them up. As with the other ones, this, is, this section, these custom fields, can be changed into a spreadsheet. And when you change it into the spreadsheet, you can do the same thing where you can copy and paste from something like an Excel spreadsheet. In addition, one of the great things about this particular spreadsheet rendering is that we are able to still have the controlled vocabularies from BioPortal as we are typing everything out. Last but not least, in these particular areas, we will be looking at our experimental metadata as well. The experimental metadata are exactly what it sounds like, and it's what we collect for the actual values that were utilized during an experiment, including cell line name, which is related to the cell line ontology in this case. But we also have density, reagents, 
passage numbers, the number of cells that were plated, all of those kinds of things for whatever this particular experiment utilized for the individual cell lines. We'll go ahead and save this data and close it out going back to the data submission tool and now head back into the small molecule metadata. As I mentioned before, if we open up the small molecule meta and experimental data, under small molecule metadata, we have the links common fields. You'll notice these are exactly the same as the other ones for cell line, but for the small molecule custom fields, they are vastly different. And this is a key aspect for the DCIC and how we have our value added aspect that we do for the DSGCs, the data generation centers, where we validate and ensure that everything they give us is all correct. One of the other great things about CEDAR is having these small question marks on the right side of all of the individual fields. This gives a description of the field saying to the user exactly what it is that we expect in that particular field. This is just a view of what the CEDAR folder looks like, where all of the information is going. Last but not least, we do have an upload data file button where you can put in, whether it's the raw data, the process data, or any other thing, and upload it directly to our servers. Here within the reagent metadata, this is where you can post the metadata that is not directly associated with a particular data set, at least not yet. Looking at the protein fields, again, we've got the links common fields, and now looking at the protein custom fields, we have a lot of things that actually come directly from Uniprot. This is, again, our value added aspect, validating the Uniprot IDs are correct, and most of these values are coming straight from Uniprot. Again, focusing on that nice little help text, if we're looking at this just as a spreadsheet, you may have no idea exactly what these individual sections are actually asking for or the format in which they're asking them in. So having that help text is tremendously helpful. In addition, just knowing that it's all coming essentially from Uniprot is very helpful as well. And again, here with protein purity and several other key aspects, those are numerical values. So if you try to type in regular text, it's just not going to work. And here we do specify, for example, that we want micromolar for the concentration and the time point is after the protein treatment when were, these, um, when were these things examined particularly. So this represents what used to be our metadata submission tool that has now been reutilized for the reagent metadata. But with that, thank you so very much for watching this little demo of the Lynx Cedar DCIC data submission tool. I hope that you enjoyed it and thank you again.